The statements that people were silenced and not having to, not being able to speak Hawaiian, I find that difficult to cope with because I didn't find, you know, when I was doing the research for this book, I didn't find any evidence of proclamations or orders not to speak Hawaiian. I, I just didn't find that at all. I don't think it ever really happened. There's so many of our kupuna who have talked to me and with tears in their eyes about their experiences punished for, for speaking a uh, Hawaiian language. My own father, My although mother. he didn't go to public school, went to Kamehameha School, was punished for speaking Hawaiian. Um, it was not just a policy, though, in, in private schools. It was the official policy of public schools that the Hawaiian uh, language could not be a medium of instruction, not even tolerated in the classroom or on the playground. And that's just... Um, a fact of life that most of our kupuna will share and have shared, um, you know, and it's, it's just um, heartbreaking to hear those kinds of, of stories. So uh, it's just simply not true. I too um, didn't know the truth about my history and I thought it was very ironic that you feel compelled to write a book to correct what you believe are distortions and, and revisionist history when in fact we are the ones that can attest uh, to the fact that we were never, you know, told the truth or taught the truth about our history. And we had to, you know, we have, we don't look in the books. We don't have to look at the statutes. I can go home this very moment and talk to my own mother who will tell me that she was punished very severely for speaking Hawaiian uh, in her school, which was St. Joseph's School in Hilo. And um, the, that those kinds of stories uh, continue um, in our oral tradition. We know the truth, and um, perhaps it is not memorialized in the statutes, um, but we know what occurred, and it did happen, and you ought not to refute it.